84 verse 7. He said, as many that appeared in Zion, they go from strength to strength. So one thing is sure this morning, you have come to receive strength. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you because as I appear this morning in harvest, I will go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Perhaps you came here with questions in your heart. I don't know what that is, but he said they go from strength to strength. This is your moment. This is the day that the Lord has made and you will go from strength to strength. Not some people, not few people, as many that appeared in Zion, they go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you because it is my moment. I will leave you strengthened. I will leave you full of power. I will leave you full of faith. I will leave you knowing that answers I've received. I will leave you knowing that, oh God, the Lord has done it for me, for my family in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you because there will be an avalanche of miracles. There will be outpouring of your spirit this morning. We thank you because no one will live here the same way that he came. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to that neighbor and say, I know who I am. Come on now. Scripture says we are gods and are children of the Most High. Turn to another person and say, I know who I am. Tell. Jam your hands together like this. It's a very simple song. We know the song. Come on. Yes. Hey, hey. Come on, everybody. Hey, hey. Woo. We know the song already. Just wait, listen. We are a chosen generation. Cause for to show me such service.
Before you sit down, can you welcome your neighbor standing right beside you? Can you pay them a compliment? How are you doing today? It's good to be seated beside you. Welcome to your month of good news. I'm excited to be here with you. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We also want to welcome those who are watching us from different locations and countries of the world. You know, we want to know you. We want to connect with you. So wherever you're watching us from, can you type, you know, I'm watching from Canada, I'm watching from Abuja, anywhere you are, you know, please want to connect with you. Put your location there in the comment section and we will connect with you in a special way today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm always excited each time I come for service, um, for the word, for the worship, in every aspect of service. You know, one thing that he told me this morning is that everyone will be living with the word. The Bible says that he sent his word. You know, what area, whatever area that you need his word, be it in your business, in your finance, relationship, your body, any area, you know, the word is available here this morning. I want to encourage you to set aside any distraction or whatever work you haven't finished, and let's focus on him today in the name of Jesus. Also, I would like to announce to us that we have a new car park, you know, at... Uh, Glam uh, car park, you know, it's right opposite Lekki Coliseum. So we're making your parking better, seamless. So if anyone is watching online and you plan to stay at home today, please don't do that. You know, there's enough parking space for everyone to partake in this powerful service. And then we also have shuttle buses, air-conditioned shuttle buses that will be bringing you from the car park, from Glam Park, car park here to church and also back you know to where your car is hallelujah also i'd like to inform you that the foundation for those who uh, did the foundation class um graduation is during first service only so please plan to you know be there for your graduation to pick up your certificates glory to jesus hallelujah can we shout nlp you know next level prayer is actually the final bus stop you know, I was thinking about it that, you know, I'm so blessed to be a part of NLP. If NLP, you know, wasn't, wasn't around, I know that so many things will have gone wrong in the lives of so many people. And indeed, it has been a final bus stop. And I'll please encourage everyone, you know, as you're in church, to please share with everyone. Another thing I would like you to do is for people to subscribe to our YouTube channel, so much so that whenever the... Um, NLP prayers come up. The people receive prompters immediately that it's time for prayers. You can share on your various social media status. You know, this is a time that we want to encourage everyone to share the good news. So many things are happening around. And trust me, that link that you're sharing can be a lifesaver for a family, for an individual going through situations. And lastly, NLP conference in the UK is next month, May the 4th. So if you have families and friends anywhere in, you know, in the UK, please make sure they register and attend. NLP conferences are like a thousand, ten thousand times more. Even, you know, so much more than you see on a daily. And trust me, their lives will never remain the same again. Kindly fix your eyes to the screen for more information coming your way. God bless you. session. Next Level Prayers continues this week. The direction for the week are April 8th, it's time to move up. April 9th, I move up. April 10th, communion, healing and Coming up this year in Canada, USA, and London, you haven't scanned the code showing on the screen. Do you have family and friends in the UK, Canada, and USA that you would love to invite for NLP conferences? Then this is the perfect time to invite them. Kindly scan the QR code to get them invited. Would you like to, like to be a part of the great happenings at Harvesters? Then join our Grow Track Step 2 themed Discover Your Design. Scan the barcode on the screen to register. In today's session, you will discover your spiritual gifts and personality types and how you can maximize them. This second class holds 
votes right after the service. Don't miss it. The marriage preparation course is ongoing and you can still join and learn how you can lead a successful and thriving marriage. Kindly scan the barcode on the screen to register. Harvester Skill Acquisition Program, HSAP, will hold in Aja, Bagada, Ikorodu, Alimosho, Ibadan and Abuja on the 16th to 19th of April 2024. Registration is currently ongoing and you can register at your campus. Are you aged 20 to 28 and ready to make a difference? Register for the next batch of the Harvester's International Internship Training Program starting this April. In the first batch, 38 carefully selected interns experience transformative changes. Register for this batch by clicking on the link or scan the barcode on the screen. Kindly note that this is for Lagos residents only. Clubhouse, a skill and talent development club, is coming up this holiday. It will be a good time for your child to learn or further develop a skill or talent. Kindly visit the information decks or the kids zone to sign up. Don't miss this opportunity. Are you a new parent who joined the Harvesters family from January to date? We would love to connect with you at our Connect Party. The date for this is the 14th of April 2024. Mark your calendars. Kindly visit the information decks or the kids zone for more details. Hello moms and dads. Another school term is here and we have the back to school impartation and prayer service to prepare your child for a successful term at school. It's coming up on the 14th of April in all services at the kids zone. Our pastors will be present to pray for your children. Please don't miss this opportunity. Kindly visit the information decks on your exit for more information. You don't have to die in silence. This is why you have a church. Do you need to talk to someone about any issues or desires? Kindly call the number on the screen. Are you ready to take your leadership skills and abilities a notch higher? Then the advanced leadership course is the right training ground for you. This virtual course is coming up on the 12th and 13th of April 2024. Time 8pm to 10pm on the 12th and 9am to 12pm on the 13th. Don't miss out on this. Dearest people of Harvesters, feedback is important to us. We would love to do better. Please let us know what and how we are doing. Kindly scan the feedback QR code on the screen. With this, I have come to the end of the announcement. And until you hear from me again, enjoy the rest of the service. The times are tough. And there are too many things waiting desperately to steal our joy. The state of the economy, academic problems, relationship heartbreaks, barrenness, marital challenges, and much more are trying to bring tears to your eyes. In this season, it is true that there's the overwhelming feeling of stress, anxiety, and depression, but you don't have to face them alone. At Harvesters, we understand the challenges you are facing. We've been there before, and we've seen the impact of a supportive voice at the end of the line. That's why we've established the Harvesters Helpline. It is an avenue to provide you a listening ear and a guiding hand. Whether you're struggling with the weight of the world or you just need someone to talk to, we are here for you. Call us today at 81 7851 Let's take the first step towards healing together. Don't isolate yourself. God loves you. Last week on Next Level Prayers was phenomenal. The name of the Lord was glorified as many received answers to prayers long outstanding. During the three days of fasting and prayers, a word of prophecy was given for a pregnant mother who was already due but having complications. Good morning, Pastor Bolaji and other NLP pastors. My name is Omolola. I am here to testify to God's goodness and mercy over my life and for the same delivery of my first news. Fast backward to 36th of March, backward to 6th of March 2024. I sent my brother the link to NLP prayer. His wife couldn't sleep throughout the night because she was feeling so much. She was in so much pain and a lot of movement. By then, she was 36 weeks pregnant. After the prayer, she should dress up and go to the hospital for doctor to evaluate her. So, during the prayer, Pastor Bola Jane said, There's a lady. She's scared and she's pregnant that there will be no complication. This is your word. Thank you, Jesus. The lady that is pregnant that is afraid receive a miracle. Amen. There will be no complication Amen. in Jesus' name. That's your word. We came to it. After the prayer, she proceeded to the hospital or get to the hospital after the scan. They told her that the baby that was in that was head down is now in breach position. That sitting. We're like, how can the baby that was head down all this well? All of a sudden just turn sitting position. But we head on to the God's word that said there will be no complication. Fast forward to 40 weeks after the scan again, it's still the same thing. Ha. And today again, Pastor Bolaji said, the pastor beside Pastor Bolaji said first that 
there's a lady that um before 24 hours you put to bed and pastor Bonadi said for some reason there's a delay in the in the pregnancy but the lord will deliver the baby in the name of jesus yes, and when you were talking about unexplainable delay and you mentioned a the woman there is a woman like that and as you sprayed in the next less than 24 hours you put to bed Amen. that's what the spirit of god mentioned wow. hallelujah so there's so a woman that had that is pregnant you meant to have given birth but it's held back somehow it's be released right now in jesus name Amen. Pastor, yeah. pastor the lord and to god be the glory at 42 weeks today april 2nd the baby was delivered in good health sound mind mother in good condition no tears natural delivery we just want to say thank you jesus grace 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 is our story this week it is time to move up it is your season to walk in your testimony so join the next level prayers with pastor bonaji from monday to friday by 6 30 a.m on all social media channels as displayed on your screen grace 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 this is your story God, we said, Wow, 42 weeks of carrying a baby, and just like that, in 24 hours, our God did it. If you are grateful to God for that family, you're grateful to God for what He is doing in your life. Can you rise up to your feet and shout a big hallelujah? Shall you tell me what a mighty God we said? But I'm grateful to be alive. It's the first Sunday in the month of April. The Lord has kept me. I have not received any bad news this year. I have not been admitted in the hospital. The Lord has preserved my business. I have not made any loss this year. If you are like me, you want to lift up your hands and give God some praise, some quality praise. You don't need a prayer point to thank your God. If you are in our hope, you want to get into a prayer point. Position. Father, we thank you. Bible says, enter his gate with thanksgiving. We are grateful as a people, as a family, as a Vestas church. Thank you. My children have not been admitted this year. Lord, I'm grateful. I have not received any bad news. I'm grateful. No plague has come near my dwelling place. I'm grateful, Lord. I shake and take a broke of those. Oh, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you turn with me to the book of Psalm 28, verse 7? Scripture says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, because he is my strength and my shield. He says, my heart trusts in him. He says, I am helped. Yes. David looked at the entirety of his life. Yes. He looked at the victories. Yes. He looked at the struggles. Yes. He said, the Lord is my strength yes. and my shield. Yes. He says, the Lord has helped me. Hey. He said, because he has helped me, I will sing a song of praise. Yes. I don't know if you are here and you're strength has not failed you can you lift up your hands this morning and say my father my father thank you for being my strength and my shield my father my father thank you for helping me if the lord has helped your family this is a good time to thank the lord my father my father i have been marvelously helped because of you my father my father thank you for the help it's my job the help I've seen in my family. I shake and take a broken dose. Oh, make it up a broken dose. I can take a broken dose. I can take a broken dose. Oh, we are grateful. I shall go back to Thank you for the contract. Thank you for helping me. I told Radosh, who am I? But your help has brought this one girl thus far. Thank you, Lord, for the relationships that I enjoy. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, you delivered me. Thank you, Lord, you brought me out of sadness. 
salvation. Thank you, Lord. You have helped me. I shake it, take 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 it, we're going to pray a prayer of consecration from the book of Isaiah 1 verse 19. Scripture says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And so obedience is what makes you and I eat the good of the land. You're going to pray for yourself this morning. My father, my father, I receive the grace and the strength to be willing and obedient. I receive the grace and the strength to follow your instructions in the name of Jesus. Can you make this your prayer? Allah Tabrados, I will follow your instructions in the name of Jesus. I will walk in your cancer. When it comes to love, I will love like you say. When it comes to ministry, I will serve like you say. In the name of Jesus, I will be the light like you say. In the name of Jesus, I will walk in your word. I will walk in your instructions. In the name of Jesus, I walk away from that which is not of God. In the name of Jesus, I walk away from that which is self. In the name of Jesus, me and my family we will walk according to your instructions. In the name of Jesus, I will make decisions based on your word. In the name of Jesus, my ears to hear. My heart is ready to do as you said to me in the name of Jesus. The things that you said to my heart, I will do them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we're praying for relationships and marriages. And this prayer is for both if you're married or you're single, I need you to turn your Bibles to Ephesians 5 verse 31. Amen. NLT version. The scripture says, a man leaves his father and his mother. Ephesians 5 verse 31. NLT version. He says, a man leaves his father and his mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. The reason why there is marriage is so that there is unity. The reason why there is a coming together is so that there is oneness. And so some people have come together but there is no oneness. But you're going to pray for yourself. Either you're getting into a relationship or you're in a marriage. You're going to declare my father, my father, my father, my father. Strengthen both Strengthen us both spiritually and physically. Strengthen our bond both spiritually and physically. In the name of Jesus, strengthen us. Strengthen every home in the HICC. In the name of Jesus, we declare oneness in our homes. In the name of Jesus, strengthen every home. Cause that to be oneness. Cause that our marriage is working. In the name of Jesus. In the back house, we're praying that the working power of God will be available in our relationships. In the name of Jesus, if you are single, you want to begin to pray. I receive a relationship that works. In the name of Jesus, if you are married, you want to declare my marriage works, intimacy works, communication works, our finances work. In the name of Jesus. The working power of God is a work in my relationships. In the name of Jesus, the working power of God is a work in my relationships. In the name of Jesus, in our marriages, there is no confusion. There is oneness, agreement, every home in our In the name of Jesus, we receive trouble free marriages. Trouble for relationships in the name of Jesus, restful relationships, restful children in the name of Jesus. We declare our marriages who murder Christ, declare your relationships.
relationships with Brother Christ. If you are single, you want to pray for God for your partners. God for your partners. In the name of Jesus, relationship that works, no unity that works. No relationship for the sake of relationship, no relationship that works. The power of God is a work in your marriage, a work in your relationship. In the name of Jesus, in your marriage will be peace. In your relationship, there will be unity. There will be oneness. In the name of Jesus, there will be understanding. There will be companionship. There will be friendship. In the name of Jesus, in the of you will make wise decision. When it's time for you to choose a life partner, you will make the wise decision. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Can we lift up our hands this morning? Scripture says, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Yes. yes. This morning we are going to declare over our lives. We are going to declare that throughout this year, you walk in good health. In the name of Jesus, I cannot hear you. Declare with me throughout this year, you walk in good health. In the name of Jesus, declare with me that your life is preserved, your family is preserved. In the name of Jesus, that which you have been praying for, you will walk into it. That which your heart desires, you will walk into it. In the name of Jesus, declare that your smell is like the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. Your smell is like the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. Declare that this year you will pay attention to God. All your heart will be for God. You will grow spiritually in the name of Jesus. You will enter your season of expansion. Expansion on the left. Expansion on the right. In the name of Jesus. Your gift will make room for you. In the name of Jesus. Anything that matters to you matter there. In the name of Jesus. Declare that plague is far from you. Delay is far from you. Loss is far from you. In the name of Jesus. Sickness is far from you. Stagnation is far from you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we receive your word today. And we declare that this is our month of good news. In the name of Jesus. Can you give him all the praise and all the glory in the house this morning? In the name of Jesus. Your voice wherever you are. Can you raise your hands as we worship?
the voice is with the voice. Kavaria Nama Koteri Eneli Enene. You can do much better. Lift the rest of the voices. Come on.
voice, lift your voice. Hallelujah. 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 Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We're just going to pray. Today's the first Sunday of a new month. We're just going to declare. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. We just want to go ahead and declare and speak into this. Well, can we go ahead and do that, everyone? Just let's start with Thanksgiving. Let's start with Thanksgiving. Lord, with our hands lifted up towards heaven, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you because there's no God like you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to read together from Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. And that's what we're going to speak over this month. We're going to read together from Isaiah chapter 3 in verse 10. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. Let's go ahead and read together. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Let's go ahead and read together. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. He says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. We're going to prophesy. I declare this month, the rest of this year, it shall be well with me. Amen. If you have children, mention your children's name. Chinedu, it will be well with you. If you are traveling, it will be well with you. If you are going for an exam, a promotion, a test, a contract, as I go, it will be well with you. Go ahead and declare everyone. Go ahead and declare. Go ahead and declare. Go ahead and declare. That it shall be well with me. It is well with all that I do. It is well with me, oh God. Lord, in my health, it is well with me. Lord, in my business. I speak over you this morning that every time I hear from you and about you, it will be good news. Amen. Every time I hear from you and I hear about you, it will be good news. Amen. Every time I hear from your company, every time I hear from your children, every time I hear from your office, every time I hear from your wife, it will be good news. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Oh, not God, I to to burn in your house. Amen. Oh, not God, I to burn in your house. Amen. I declare that as you go, the favor of God goes ahead of Amen. you. Every plan of the wicked comes to nothing. Amen. In the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ, I pray for all the businessmen in this church. Anywhere you're watching from all those online, in the other centers, I said in Jesus' name, do well. Amen. I bless you with the blessing of do well. Amen. In the name of Jesus, do well. Amen. Let the biggest deal come to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. The Bible says Daniel was promoted. I declare everyone in paid employment. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk into promotions. Amen. Walk into better career Amen. paths. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. The funding you need comes to you easily. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. The payment they are owing back, they are paying right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. I pray for you today that you will grow in the things of Amen. God. You will grow in the things of God. Amen. Your prayer life will be set on Amen. fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, your appetite for the word of God, for soul winning will grow. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, God will use you to do mighty things Amen. for his kingdom. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ, every addiction you have struggled is broken. Amen. Every addiction is broken. Amen. Every, every hidden sin is broken. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, the singles are getting married. Amen. The singles are getting Amen. married. The married are having children. Amen. In the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ, nothing will go wrong with your health. Amen. I declare you blessed. Amen. Irrevocably blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ, shout grace. grace. Shout grace. grace. Shout grace. grace. Say, this is my story. This is my story. 
Say, I'm irrevocably blessed. I am irrevocably blessed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Somebody hallelujah. shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say glory. glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at him and say, you are irrevocably blessed. Say, expect it. Amen. Please, you can have your seats. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just a couple of announcements before we pack and before we delve into the word of the Lord. Um, before we delve into the word of the Lord, um, two things. NLP conference is taking place next month, the 4th of May. Praise the Lord. You know, I was very concerned about the high, the very, the rising price of tickets, but now tickets are available. It's cheaper, thank God, for air peace. So, yeah, so all of us that are going, there's a time to buy your tickets. And, you know, if we can come together as a group, maybe we can even get a bigger deal. Just imagine we approach them and we say 100 of us are going for NLP conference in the UK and we can get a better deal. Praise the Lord. So, please, let's go. But more importantly, um, this is what we wanted everyone to do as a church. We want all the churches to be involved in registering people for NLP conference. What does that mean? If I have friends in the UK, in Canada, in, um, in, in the US, I'm going to ask them and say, do you know about this? Sometimes, you know, in fact, I bumped into people recently and I said, oh, I didn't know the conference was holding. I didn't know the conference was holding. I didn't know the conference was holding. So please, let's do something. Let's do us a favor. You know, do that. And we have this opportunity to register as a church to be able to get our friends. Our leaders will tell us more about that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So if you want to tell your friends, one of the things you can do is to share on the flies. So you can get out your phones right now. Go to my page on Instagram, on TikTok, and share on it and say NLP conference is coming over to the UK. Glory to God. I said hallelujah. Or for those that in Lekki, you know, of course, we thank God for the growth that all of the churches are experiencing. It's just phenomenal across all the churches. Bagada, all the churches, Abuja, you know, all the churches. But for those in Lekki, we have um, a huge parking problem. So there are some things we've done just for the down opposite Coliseum. We just got in a car park that can park 150 cars. Amen. So instead of you winding around doing the service, especially those in the third, second, third and service thereabouts, you can just go and pack and there's a shuttle bus to bring you there, to bring you from there into this place. So if you're wearing heels, you think you don't want to pack far, that's your opportunity. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. All right, well, let's just get into the word of God this morning. I'm excited about the teaching today. Um, I want all the cameramen to be affected, my microphones to work today. So this month, we're starting um, our emotional recovery series, our emotional recovery series. So you know, every month we take on a topic. Last month, what did we talk about? What? We talk about salvation during the midweek service, but in the Sunday service, we spoke about the word of God. You know, we spoke about the word of God. So this month, we're speaking about emotional healing. And I'm saying so because... So this is my invitation. All of you online, all of you, you know, all of you in the physical church, you may want to share the link with someone. It's streaming on my, on my Instagram, YouTube page, and Facebook page. And the reason why is that, um, you know, before now, when someone is physically sick, it is a big deal. And it is a big deal still. But right now, one of the things that is killing people has become emotionally, um, emotional issues. If I'm correct, suicide has become the highest cost of human death right now. Suicide has become, in fact, yesterday, someone was sharing a story with me about someone that, you know, this is in the U.S., someone I know personally. They found this car running. The engine of the car was running, and the car was running. So the police just wondered, this is abnormal, and they did a little search around the property, and they found the body dead, you know? And, you know, just a lot of stories around that. And I'm saying so because some of you have friends that... Um, are dealing with emotional issues, this series will practically, practically help them. So all of you online, you want to share the link with your friends, in the church, you want to share the link with your friends. Next Sunday, if you know someone that is depressed, that is not managing their emotion well, you want to bring them to come, it will be really, really powerful in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. We're going to read two scriptures as foundation for today. Two scriptures as foundations for today. Let's turn our Bibles to... Mark chapter 13 in verse 24. Mark chapter, Matthew rather, chapter 13 in verse 24. 
I'm going to read from verse 24 to verse 28. It's, I'm going to take four verses, but if you have a lot of time, you may want to read. Um, you may want to read the whole context. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to verse 20, 28. The Bible says, speaking about Jesus, he said, and he put another parable forth, saying, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed. And that's very powerful. The Bible says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that sowed good seed. And the Bible says this in the next five, verse 5, verse 25. And when, watch this now, it says, And when men slept, his enemy came along and sowed towels amongst the tears and went his way. Verse 26. And the Bible says, And when the blade was sprung up, it didn't show immediately. It says, When the bad seed was sown, when the towels were sown, the towels means bad seed. It means, you know, terrible seeds. So, the Bible says that God had sown. You need to help me fix the sound. It's just very bloppy, you know. Yeah, it's not concise. So, you need to help me fix that, please. So, the Bible says this. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then the tears also appeared. So, it was not when the tears appeared that the tears got there. The tears were there all along. But it was as they grew, they grew to maturity. Verse 27, the Bible says this, And so the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, did we not, did we not sow good seed in the field? From when comes the tears? Some of you are wondering, all these this dysfunctions that I have, the emotional trouble that I have, where did it come from? The Bible says when men slept, and, and I want to notice this. Most often, the emotional challenges we have come from when we were children. But they don't show up until we come to the age of maturity. And that's why you'll notice a lot of people that were raped when they were young, they would feel more pain as an adult talking about the rape than as a child talking about the rape. And I'm going to come to that today. Today's going to be of us there will be moments of tears there'll be moments of recovery because sometimes for you to heal you must break you must tear you must reap apart for you to heal sometimes things just have to get worse for you to get better the bible says this it says and where had the tears come from because that's a question you're asking you're wondering this anger problem i have where did it come from this you know a lady came to me some time ago and it says I have trust issues. I, I, I don't trust anybody. Even my father, I don't trust men at all. And I asked her a question. I said, when you were seven years old, were you this way? He said, no. Because she told me I was born this way. He said, no. I said, when did this happen? Then she went back in history and said, it was actually about 12 or 13. And she told me a story. Because a lot of things you'd say, this is how I am. The opinion you form, you were not born with it. A long life, the enemy came and sowed what? Tears. And those tears are events and beliefs that now influences you radically. So the Bible says in verse 28, see what the Bible says. What did it, it says, didn't we sow good seed? And it said to them, and the reason, watch this now. The reason most of you are wondering, where did, where did this come from? Is that the tears was not sown actively. They were sown when you were asleep. Most of those things that brings those emotional pain happen to you when you were least aware and even some of you although you know something happened to you you cannot even connect where you are today to what happened before sometimes is when you talk to people i'll give an example um just some time ago i was talking to this very successful man this guy is literally a billionaire very successful guy and he just said, I feel empty. He said, I feel very empty. And I said, well, I understand that. He said, he said one of the challenges I have, I said, so how do you deal with this emptiness? He said, it's women. He said, you'll not believe it. There was one week, and he told me, just to me, he said, this week, maybe that just passed, he said, I had sex with about 10 women in just one week. He said, and when I have sex with them, I ask myself, what did I gain? He said, well, finally, the next day, there's somebody else. He said, I can't even keep one consistent. He said, he said, it's even crazy. I go to a strange country. In a week, I have sex with 10 women. He said, no, because I don't even know why I do it. And, and you know, 
when he was saying that, I said, that's great. I said, I said, that's great. He said, how can you say that's great? I said, because I'm learning from you. I'm learning from you. I, and I said to him, I asked him a question. I said, um, have you noticed that you have more sex when you're troubled or when you're successful? And I said, no, I have it anytime. I said, slow down and think. Then he said, oh, that's right. That week I had 10 sex. I was stressing over things at work. I said, that's one. When else do you have the tank says again? Then remember, you say, I can see a pattern. Then go to, wow, you are very good. Did the Holy Ghost tell you that? You know, and I said to him, I said, the reason why I knew that is this. Every time you have a dysfunctional behavior, it is your coping mechanism. For you, sex is a way to get out of the challenges you face, either in life or either in business. For some other people, it. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, what are you dealing with? What are you dealing with? Because everybody is dealing with something. Some people, as soon as they, as soon as they have challenges, they just go to the bedroom. If you don't know what that means, get out of your mind. Glory to God. And most of you, most, most of us, what has happened to us is that it says, why men slept? The enemy came. So when those things happen, we are not even conscious that something has happened to us. It says, why men slept? The enemy came it, it, and, and sold. And that's why when you woke up, when they woke up, when you become conscious, you just see certain behaviors. And, and let me tell you something. You, you can be a pastor and have emotional challenges. Because I've been there. You can be a pastor and be emotionally wounded. As a matter of fact, you will not know this. One of the professions that is very open to emotional wound is a pastor. And the reason why is that the more you interact with people, the more people will hurt you. And the most difficult person to heal is a physician. That's why doctors that smoke, they, what can you tell them? Nothing. So the Bible says, and he said to them, let's read verse 28 together, I want to go. And he said to them, and he said unto them, an enemy had what? He says, an enemy had done this. So why didn't they know the enemy had done this? Because why they were sleeping. It was why they were sleeping. Can, can I say something to you? Some of you here that think you are very hard working. It's trauma that is pushing you, not hard vision. You use your work to distract yourself from the pain you feel. And that's why no matter how successful you are, you cannot slow down and celebrate because it's not about hitting a point. It's the fact that the way you express, the way you respond to your trauma is by hard work. It's called the overachiever syndrome. And that's why you see sometimes ladies that are single, that are doing well in a lot of banking sectors and entertainment sectors and career sectors, that are very single, they just, they just keep going. And they just keep you know why they keep going they don't want to leave gap to feel anything emotional to feel to feel lonely so they stay in the office till 10 or 11. if you work with them you're in trouble because you know the ladies your business is working and you're saying and um, so i want to go are you okay you want to go i'm a woman i'm here till 11 o'clock where are you going to what's your what's your problem and you will begin to interpret as hard work and that's why you must be careful you choose as a mentor and when you have a mentor Learn carefully before you learn their wounds also. If you're not copy, you can copy someone's success, you can copy someone's failure, and you can copy someone's wounds. And that's why sometimes you will see a very good Christian pick someone that's not Christian as a mentor, and it's wonderful. As they start getting richer, it will start becoming a womanizer. And the reason why he was, he was not able to do what I call selective mentoring and saying, what I want from you is this area. This area, I don't want it. And what happens is that they open up themselves to someone. They just open up their heart to someone and their heart become corrupted. It says, an enemy has done this. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 12. It's a longer reading. Second Samuel chapter 13, in verse 12. I'll read one verse and you read the other. This is the story of the two, 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 two kids, of, um, two kids of, um, of David. The Bible says this, verse 12. This, so one of, them had, one of them fell in love. The firstborn called Wu. What's the firstborn now? Amnon. 
had fallen in love with uh, with Tema, which was something that was wrong. So, and he had made one trick. He had, I mean, there's a lot I can say about this, but I just want to. Can we read the whole thing? Let, let's read the beginning. I will jump. Verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a first sister, a beautiful sister, whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, Amnon was the king, apparently was the first son. And the son of David loved her. For love, that means he had sexual feelings for her. You know, and Amnon was so vexed, he was obsessed that he felt sick. That's the first thing. Any kind of love that's making you feel sick, you are sick. That's not how. See, any kind of love that makes you feel sick, it's no longer love. It's lust. It's infatuation. There's something wrong. And let me say this to you. Sometimes when people have trauma, it manifests as a desperation for love. When you read the story of David, it was a family. David's family was a total case of a dysfunctional relationship. But you don't blame them because look at David himself. David, some Bible historian said the reason why David was in the backside of the desert was because David was an illegitimate child. And that was why when Samuel came and asked them and said, bring all your sons forward, they could not present David because nobody should know that David was an illegitimate child. So David himself suffered rejection. And when you look through David all through his life, he, he really did not have that relationship that would support him. And when he became a father, I guess to overcompensate for the rejection he suffered, he indulged his children. So see what the Bible says. It says she was a virgin and Amnon thought it hard to do something to her. Verse 3, verse 3. Glory be back. Look at what. And the Bible says, and Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother. And Jonathan was a very subtle or intelligent man. He was streetwise. Verse 4. And he said unto him, Why art thou being the king's son lean from day to day? Would thou not tell me what it is? And I'm not said to her, I love Tamar, my brother's absolute sister. Eventually, this guy gave him a plan and says, Be sick. Tell your sister to bring you food. Rape her. What am I saying to you? You will rise to the standards of your friends. What you don't want to do, your friends will give you strategy. What you want to do that you don't know how, your friends will teach you. And that's why you must be very careful who your friends are. The reason why is that your friend will determine your standard. The Bible says, I'm not already thought this would be so terrible. But he had a friend that would encourage him. You will often rise to the standard of your friend. The major challenge is that most of you don't have friends by intention. You have friends by coincidence. So, you just say, hey, we're in the neighborhood. We have friends. No, sir. Be carefully. Friends that look like your future, not like your past. Be carefully. Friends that look like your future, not like your past. Be carefully. Friends that look like your healing, not like your wound. Be carefully. Friends that look like your recovery, not like your trauma. So they say, where are the association of rich women? I don't want to be an association of rich women. I want to be an association of people that have recovered and have done something in their life. Because every time they come, and this is what happens in such friendship, misery likes company. Every time you come together, you begin to talk about how women are terrible, how men are terrible, how these are terrible. And poison will be giving poison out. And poison will be giving poison out. Then you leave with more poison than you came with. Well, let's jump quickly. Let's jump quickly. Let's jump quickly. Are you there? Let's jump to verse, where are we now? Let's jump to verse 12. Wow. The Bible says this. So he had raped her in verse 12. And he said, Nay, my brother, don't force yourself on me. No such things are to be done in Israel. Do not do this fully. I wither and I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? As for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. <laughs> now control, now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold you from thee. However, he will not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than but her, she forced her and lay with her. Praise God. Don't go and sleep over when you don't want to have sex. Simple. <laughs> this is a revelation, right? Like, what? Praise God. Hallelujah. I know that he should control himself. I'm not agreeing. 
But if he cannot control himself in the middle of the night, where can you go? Praise God. See what the Bible says, verse 16. And he said unto her, No cause, um, there is no cause. Uh, well, they had sex eventually, and he told her to get out. And he said to him, this, this is no, this is no cause. The evil in sending me away is greater than the all that they have done. So she began to hurt. I'm just trying to jump. Verse 17. And he called the servant and ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman away from me and bought the door after her, after he had raped her. Just imagine. And she had a garment of diverse colors unto her for for there were such robes which the kings, which the king's daughters that were virgin apparelled. Then his brother brought her out and bolted the door after him. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent a garment of diverse color that was on her and laid, and laid her hands on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, this is now a brother, that was her stepbrother. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Had Amnon thy brother been with thee, but now hold your peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Taman remained. So this is what I'm going to. And Taman remained desolate. Take note of that word. Taman remained desolate. Trauma. Taman remained desolate in a brother's house. Now let me give you a back background. We can't go into this today. It's not only Taman that had trauma. Absalom, our older brother, had trauma. You know why? The Bible says for two years, Absalom did not talk to the king, did not talk to the brother, did not even mention it. You know what he was waiting for? Two years after, he went and killed the brother. He didn't want to kill the brother alone. He wanted to kill King David. And that tells you something. Emotional wounds and trauma does not... Let me say it again. Time does not heal emotional wounds and trauma. Emotional wounds and trauma heals with time. What, what's the difference? If you, let's say that something happens, and this is very powerful. Let's say that um, you were abandoned as a child and nobody cared for you. And you grew up with a sense, because when, you, when nobody cares for you as a child, you will have an abandonment syndrome. And what is an abandonment syndrome? One lady said to me, she was saying to me, said, I don't know what's wrong. He said, I'm only attracted to older men that are married. He said, I don't know why younger people, I don't find them attractive. And when she said that, I already know what's wrong. I asked her one question. I said, um, tell me about your father. He said, I was never really close to him. I said, you were never close to him. I said, tell me more. As she began to cry, she broke down in tears. He said, I wanted this love so badly, but I never had it. I said, I understand what the problem is. What the problem is, is this. Why you are attracted to older men? You are not looking for relationship. You are looking for your father. And that need is driving you to older men. And she was saying this because she was saying that, I don't know why I'm not married. He said, so when you see younger people, because your primary need is to look for a father's love and support that a younger person may not understand or give to you, you don't find them attractive. I said, the first thing we have to do is to heal that wound. Then you will begin to like normally. That's why people like things that can destroy them because they are wounded. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. What is trauma? Write this down. Trauma is a lasting emotional trauma. Is a lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, and life-changing event. I will say it again. What is trauma? Trauma is a lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, or life-threatening event. And there are several of this. Sometimes trauma can be the loss of someone. You lost somebody. I, I would, you know, what is trauma again? Trauma is a lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, or life-threatening event. The thing about trauma is this. Once you have trauma, it doesn't disappear. It stays in your subconscious. It's, your body stores trauma. Your body stores trauma so powerfully that if you find yourself, this is a very powerful law, your body stores trauma. If you find yourself in that situation, your body subconsciously will respond the way it responded the first time. Praise God. I said praise God. 
I say praise God. Someone was telling me about his brother, a man. Since their parents died, the last of the parents died, everything just turned down for him. And some of the time, eh, sometimes when you see these things, we Christians, we over-spiritualize things. You say it's demonic attack. When everything just stopped down, he lost his job. He stopped taking care of his marriage. He just stopped making money. It's like just like going backward. And it was a moment when the last of his parents died. And they were bringing him for prayer. And I said to them, this thing is more than prayer. This guy is traumatized. Because the way we all respond to trauma is different. Some people's response to trauma is this. They lose motivation instantly. They don't want to do anything again in life. Trauma can be as a result of a loss of somebody. What can trauma can be as a result of somebody? I was talking to a lady, and very, very, I mean, I was talking to a lady, and um, I just, I mean, someone that I know very well, but in all my knowing her for about five years, she has never told me that she's dating before. So I just, this day, we're talking, and I feel like I just felt as if I should touch that subject. And I said, Why are you not dating? He said, oh. He said, Pastor, there's nobody now. If they come, I will date. And I asked her a question. I said, when last did you date? And she said, maybe four years ago. And I said, mm-hmm. The reason why is that that gap shows there's a problem. I said, four years ago. Mm? I said, okay. I said, so why have you not dated? He said, generally, I'm not interested. Then I just think that this and this. I could tell something was wrong, but she herself, she didn't know what was wrong. I said, okay. I said, um, what makes you lose interest in relationship? She looked, thought. Then she, as soon as she raised up her head, her eyes had become red. The tears were flowing. He said, just a year or so before that, four years ago, he said, we went to spend some time in our family and friends' place. And when we went there, real life story. One of my family friends, very good family, took me into the room, someone I trusted like an older brother, and disregarded me. He said, since that day, when I see men, I feel unsafe. I feel as if they would do something to me that would hurt me. He said, when I see men, he said, even me, I now look at myself as a toy. So, so that I just detach myself like that. What she didn't know is this. And, and, and you know, what she didn't know is this. Every time she saw men, her subconscious would label them as unsafe. 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 Are you getting me? But listen to me. If you have had a traumatic past or you are dealing with emotional pain, the first step out of it is to say, enough is enough. I can come out of this. The first step, because there's a way you can begin to say, this is who I am. This is how it will be. This is how it will continue. No one will ever love me. This cannot change. The first step is say, enough is enough. I'm coming out of this. Glory to God. I say 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 glory to God. Let me close with this one point. Emotion trauma can make it difficult or in, in fact, there, there's something trauma can make it difficult or impossible to communicate your feelings or your needs. Trauma can make it difficult or impossible to communicate your feelings or communicate your needs. Personally, and those things are learned. Some of you, you are, some of you cannot communicate how you feel. You are not even aware. And when you say men are not emotional, it's not true. I, I remember, when you say men are not emotional, it's not true. I remember one lady in our church, they used to say, my husband is not emotional. The day the husband broke down and cried, 
The wife said, my husband is unconsolable. I said, because he had emotion. But men are emotional, but men have learned methods. How to, number one, suppress their emotion. Number two, distract themselves from their emotion. Number three, make their emotion unnoticed. But the day their emotion grab them, men will just lose control. And that's why a lot of men commit suicide. You know why they commit suicide? Because the emotions have no outlet. They will just bust out. Have you not seen men that just walk out of the marriage? They didn't even have a conversation. They will just escape. They didn't even say, I'm going, you know, leave me or this is it. Bah! And the reason why is that you will say, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. The thing was growing, don't bring it. They will, before it kills me, I escape. Because flight is a response to trauma. Flight, running, is a response to trauma. So, back to the conversation. Back to the conversation. Well, one of the things, emotional trauma can make it difficult to communicate your feelings. To communicate emotional need. And everybody has emotional need. Everybody has a need. Everybody has a need to feel understood. Everybody has a need to feel connected. Everybody has a need to feel you matter. And I want to tell you, <laughs> you know, this, is, the, the, this alone is just very challenging even for me. And I came from a background. I came from a background that um, the way I was raised, mm, the way I was raised, I was raised not to pay attention to my emotional needs, to feel guilty for my emotional needs. So, I'll give an example. So, if I, I will give you some background. So, number one, I was raised in a polygamous family. The thing about a polygamous family is this. Because it's also large, the parents don't have time to focus on the child. Do you know what I'm talking about? Exactly. So, I was raised in a polygamous family. Then the second thing is that in a polygamous family, there's a lot of competition. And because there's competition, parents don't f put attention on what? On each individual child. I said one time, I said that many, you know, many people talk about their dad and their relationship. Me, I have no memory that my father hugged me in my entire life. That my father, at one point, not that he died though, that my father came and for whatever reason, either it was my birthday or it was something and hugged me. One of the things, one of the things you will realize is this, when you come from a family where you cannot talk, where people blame you for your emotional fear, Every time you talk, they make you feel guilty for why you feel that emotion. They make you feel as if you are too emotional. So you grow up. You grow up. I'm telling you, you grow up. So what happens when you are young, they begin to talk down your emotion. Why are you always crying? What's wrong with you? Why are you always crying? Why are you always clingy? Why are you always this? Why are you always that? And what you don't know is that you are telling the child, don't communicate your emotional needs. Shut down your emotional need. Shut down your emotional need. Shut down until the child just becomes numb. To his emotional needs. One story I've never shared publicly. I've never, never shared publicly. Never shared publicly. When we're young, when we're young. When I was younger, not. I mean, I'm still young. <laughs> when I was younger. And this is a very painful personal story. We had gone somewhere, and I was asleep, and one of our friends came. And we were meant to share the room together. It had stepped off, practically. And he took his bed. I could hear, but I was asleep. Came to the bed, and he just began to touch me as a guy. Someone says, did you rebuke him? And I want to show you what I did. I didn't slap him. I didn't understood, I didn't understand what I felt. I'm going to tell you what I felt today. What I felt is a term called emotional freezing. When something happens to you and you leave your body, and it's as if you are looking at your body from outside. He took off my shirt. He was kissing my chest, kissing. It was as if I was just frozen like this. And the reason why is because I'd grow up in an environment that I could not express my emotions. And when something happened that 
my emotions cannot handle, I freeze. Freezing, emotional freezing is when you leave your body. You are there, but you are no longer there. Many of you are in marriages. You are frozen emotionally. You've left. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? It's okay. Some of you are dating. It's, you've, you're experiencing conscious emotional freezing. It's present continuous. I froze. Then the guy realized at some point that for some reason, I cannot respond. And he left me. And he stepped off. And I couldn't sleep again. I was just frozen. And I will never forget where it happened. I will never forget with whom it happened. And I've never been able to discuss with anybody. And one of the reasons why is that that thing left an impact on my soul. Praise God. And the reason I'm saying so is this. John James chapter 5 says something. It says, confess your fault one to another that you may be healed. You will never recover until you begin to open up. You will never recover until you begin to open up. And even though you are wounded, are you don't, but the question is, so why don't people open up? People don't open up because they try to open up and people have shut them down. Some children have tried to tell you that uncle touched me and you shut them down. In the office where you work, they've tried to discuss and you shut them. Some of you are parents here and your, your children are telling you, say, hey, keep quiet, what do you know? So one of the reasons people don't open up is because people talk and people shut them down. Another reason why people don't open up is this. Because when they open up, the person they open up to betrays them. And so they will tell and conclude that it's better I die with my pain and secret than to open up to someone that will stab me and make the wound worse. And I'm saying so because you can choose to be someone that people can open up to and receive healing. And that experience caused me to struggle in a lot of ways. The, the first two sexual experiences I had was nothing I initiated. It was always something someone did to me. For me, house help, to a lovely Christian sister I used to know, and this one. So, it tells you something. It just tells you something that, what do they see? How do they see me? This and this and this. Praise God. It's quiet here today. Praise God. Let me, let me believe this scripture. Does anybody want to share your own experience with me? Want to share? Have you experienced emotional trauma before? From the loss of someone at work when you were divorced? And, and you, you know, I, there's a lot I have to say, but for time, there's a lot I have to say. So people go through this emotion. So when people go through emotional trauma, they. It makes it difficult to communicate your feelings or emotions. The reason why it's difficult is because you are taught from when you're young that your emotion does not matter. And it, it is simple things. You are taught from when you're that your emotion does not matter. Ah, why are you always crying? Hey, swallow jaw. You're a man, man it up. And, and what they're telling you indirectly is that you should not be feeling those emotions. You should not be what talking with those emotions. Praise God. Even when you have emotions and you share it, they tell you that your emotions are wrong. Your emotions are not wrong. Your interpretation of emotions can be wrong, but emotions are always right. Because your emotions are expression of something you deeply believe. Single moms, I have something to tell you. Hmm. Because sometimes single moms, single moms, single moms don't treat your children like projects. I know that you want to prove to their father or to their mother that they will succeed. So single mom gets into an overdriven state where they drive the child and they don't necessarily pay attention to the emotional need. So you raise up a child that is successful, but emotionally is deaf and dumb. 
And many of you know because many of you that have single mothers here, single fathers here, you come back and say, um, that I'm not feeling fine. I agree, I'm not feeling fine. Go back and read your book, Charlie. What's not feeling fine? This is a, this is a, this. Go back and read your book. What's not feeling fine? The most difficult person to discuss your failure with in school is a single mother, a single father. Ha! Your father's family, yeah, 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 yeah. You got an extra carryover, yeah, yeah. So the child will keep hiding, keep hiding, keep hiding until he crashes. And many of you, that's why today you're not able to speak because you are forced that if you speak, you will be punished for speaking the truth. What do you do? Hide. Cover up, cover up, cover up. You say, you say, fake it until you make it. You can fake it and die there. Praise God. I said, praise God. Another critical mistake single parents make is this. They make their child, their pain bearer. So when they have a problem with their, with the divorce father, or maybe the baby father, or the baby mother, or the family, or they have a problem in business, who, guess who they talk to? They call the child and tell that child, you know what you're doing? What you're doing is that you are taking the childhood of the child away. The reason why is that the child can hear you, but is not emotionally wired to carry the emotional problem you're telling him. So that child in trying to understand would be, you'll be just starting. It's like putting a 2 kVA generator on the generator that is past my neighbor. The child will be vibrating, shaking, vibrating. Vibra and you will see it. You, you know how you will see it? From a young age, the child will become very, very serious. From a young age. From a young age, the child, the, the child would begin to take care of himself beyond this age. From a young age, he will begin to care. The child will not know how to even enjoy his life. And the reason why is that from a young age, a single parent looked for an outlet. And the outlet became your child that was not emotionally able to carry your emotional need. You dumped it on him. And that child will become emotionally paralyzed. In his future, he will not know how to relate emotionally. So he will marry and so You don't understand. The child is five years old, but emotionally you have elongated him to 40. What will he be at 40? You become an old man. So when things that should treat people, make them happy, your own child is not happy. And the reason is why are you not excited? You've have, you have stretched the emotional capacity, you have turned it, you have rewired it. The child is not okay again. Praise God. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. Praise God. So how do you heal? The first step in healing is that decision. That you know what? My pain will not define me forever. That I stop somewhere now. The decision that I will not carry this pain to the grave. The decision that I will not carry this pain and pass it to my children. I could have been past this pain, but I will not pass it to other people. And that's why this one is very powerful. Do you think so? I can hear you. Do you think so? Are you, do you have trauma with communicating? Do you think so? And let me tell you how I've dealt with trauma. This is me. This is my dealt with trauma. One of the ways you deal with trauma very powerfully is to change your perspective. And how do you change your perspective? Two things. I always tell me, does my trauma make me feel as if I'm buried or I'm planted? When I look at my experiences, does my experiences make me feel as if I'm buried or I'm planted? Buried means my end has come. Planted means I'm coming back again with what? With much more than what died. So my experiences is that I'm planted. I'm not buried. Buried means... My past has defined me. The end has come and I'm finished. Planted means it's just for a little while. I'll spring out. And the me that we evolve will be better than the me that died. When you are, listen, once you, once, if you are wounded, please don't date or choose somebody. The reason why is that once you are wounded, you will be attracted to wounded people. Once you grow out of your wounded state into healed states, you will not, not find them attractive. Not because they are not good people. 
because they were fellow body bearers, not people you are attracted to. So once you don't need the, you have the wound, they just leave it there. Praise God. Let's pray. Can we stand on our feet? Let's pray. Let's stand on our feet. Nobody is sitting down. Anybody is sitting down. I know why you're sitting down. I know why. You are sitting down because. Praise God. The Bible says the Spirit of God is upon me to bind up the brokenhearted. I want you to pray. Two prayers. Lord, help me heal. Lord, don't only help me heal. Help, use me to heal other people. Let's go ahead and pray. Use me to heal other people. Help me heal. And use me to heal other people. Help me heal. And use me to heal other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen to me. When you heal, you can look at your abuser in the face and find no pain there again. That's healing. That guy that touched me, today we are friends. I still spoke to him yesterday. You know what? When I look at him, I don't feel the hurt. I feel pain because I'm like, what could have happened to you that at a young age, this is who you became? Because at the end of the day, the trauma experience was the result of the trauma he had. And that's what forgiveness looks like. And that's what it will look like at the end of this teaching. You look back at your boss, your colleagues, your father, your mom, and this. And their power to make you cry is gone. Rather, you can look at them with pity in their eye and say, all I feel for you is mercy. And I'm praying that God will heal you. Praise God. God bless you. you can have your seats. Praise God. Who? Oh. Why do I feel that heaviness in this service? Is it a topic? Praise God. Let's go ahead and give our tithing offerings. Choir, we need to really sing after each of the teachings. Because I want to send people back lifted, not the way they are. Let's go ahead and give our tithes and give our offerings. Glory to God. Are we ready to give? Let me ask your neighbor, are you a giving Christian? Yeah. So today we're going to give our titan offerings. And um, I want to encourage you, just encourage you, that as an act of faith in Christ, as an act of believing the gospel, go ahead and give today. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let trauma hold you back. Some say, ah, all they want is our money, trauma is talking. When a Christian is saying that all they want is that money, what one experience has defined your whole life? At this church I used to go, but this is not that church. That's why you came here. Praise God. Hallelujah. If a titan stand on your feet as our culture is, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. If a titan stand on your feet as our culture is, let's pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're giving your offering, raise them, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the opportunity to bring our titan offers before you today. We give because we love you. We give because you are good. I ask you, according to your word, that you bless everyone given. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. you can have your seat. And while you're sitting down, if today happens to be your first time in Harvesters International, will you please raise up your hands above your head? We'd love to welcome you in Jesus' name. Your first time in Harvesters, just raise your hands above your head. Wonderful. Can we go ahead and appreciate them today? That's so great. That's so great. Ada, it's nice to see you. Yeah. Praise God. I'm not talking to Aki. I'm talking to Ada. Praise God. Hallelujah. So just keep your hands up until the ushers come to you. Until the ushers come to you. Amen. Midweek service will be very powerful. I will be teaching powerfully this midweek. I hope you'll come. We're going to continue this and go deeper. How many of you know someone that needs this message? How many of you know someone that needs this message? Wave your hands if you know someone. You don't know anybody that needs the message? 
Okay. So what you can do is that post a comment on, on social media, share, and let all of us share together with ourselves. Let's share. I think everybody needs this message. You can go back and watch it. Overcoming emotional trauma and what they call it and, and pain. Let's stand on our feet and close the service. If you got the first timers cast, please return back to the first timers. Return to the first timers team. Hallelujah. Brother Thomas, how are you? Where's your wife? Is she sitting down there? She's at home. She traveled, okay. All right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And surely, 